G'day guys, it's a Clevo King here. I'm gonna show you guys 351 Cleveland 2V head intake manifold choices today. Make sure you smash the like and subscribe. Thanks for coming back to watch another video. Let's get started. Guys, 90% of street engines are always going to love the Edelbrock Performer 2V. This one's an F351 2V, it's a bit more old school. Now, we'll have a quick look at it over here. The reason I like this particular one is it's got a heat riser blocked off over here, the kidney beans built into it. So it's just a slightly neater install. And it's got the slightly thicker carby flange gasket here for a slightly better seal on the gasket. I run my brakes over here and my auto on a double prong, like a factory intake. Guys, I can't say how good these intakes are, honestly. I've pulled many high rises off and even these Y ends and put these on and people have been more than happy with the power that they've picked up. Not only horsepower, the torque, the down low, it's amazing. It's too many guys shoot high and too big and they don't need them. Now I'll, we'll talk more about these later but this is really the best thing. These fit under the bonnet on everything. With these, you can actually run a one inch Benoldic spacer under the bonnet of most Australian Falcons with a 14 inch drop base air filter and have no clearance issues at all. Now, this car be that I recommend for 90% of the guys that are going to go for one of these on a Cleveland is a 750 vacuum secondary car be. This one's from Hume Performance, it's brand new. If you're going to be racing a lot, you could go to a 650 double pumper, but it'll be a bit overkill and you're not really going to get very good fuel distribution out of a dual plane intake. I'll sit this back on here. A lot of guys fall victim to going to these little air cleaners. This is a little 9 inch by 2 inch. Guys, I do it myself. You lose <laughs> massive power. It's a bit of a joke. You don't spend money on an engine and run something like this. Right. Now, uh, what we wanted to mention about these Edelbrock aluminium intakes when you're buying one new guys, don't buy the steel pan. You fit these just with gaskets. You can't run the turkey pan, as we call it in Australia, underneath one of these. The yellow is not heavy enough to crush it properly and you could actually end up damaging your intake manifold. Had a few guys do it and they bring these in and it leaves lines and ridges and it actually wrecks the mating surfaces and you've got to like remachine it. This is one of those old bastards, turkey pens. A little bit hard to crush. All right guys, so back to where we're at, right? 351, two V intakes. These two intakes is gonna be for 100% of street engines. This is race only. Now, we've talked about the dual plane. This starts power RPM from idle, 1000 RPM to about 5500 RPM. And you wouldn't wanna put it on anything making more than about 400 horsepower. Some guys do, but Personally, I wouldn't. If you're making that sort of power, I'd step up to something like this. This is a Y-end accelerator, single plane, two feet. This particular intake here is very nice, guys. It's a latest model one. If you have a look at the writing's a little bit wider and like lower case. Keep your eyes out for these online. They've got a really nice, neat install once again with the EGR and that blocked off. The model number is 7516. Now another reason why you don't run a steel pan with any of these alloy intakes guys is the factory intake manifolds being iron, that steel shield is meant to keep oil splash off the bottom of a steel intake to keep the temperature down so you don't get bad heat transfer to the carbine. They've actually designed that into the bottom of these aluminium intakes, like the pan, to drip and to strain the oil back so there's no need to ever run one. This is where they held the intake for tooling when they were machining it up. Very nice thing. These intakes here, guys, shift the power a little bit for more for, to about 1500 to six and a half, seven thousand RPM. And this is for the sort of the 10% of the more horsepower oriented builds, the guys that are going to run double pumpers. This will still fit under the bonnet of any Australian Falcon with a Holly half inch Fenoldic spacer. I love to use Falco sticky open gaskets as you'll notice. Make sure you check out my other videos, guys. I'll normally top these off with a 750 HP 
double pumper Shriek Kabi. These are awesome guys. I've pushed this intake manifold on a 2V aluminium head combo. It's just shy of 600 horsepower. All under the bonnet guys, no one could tell and don't worry we won a lot of street races with that thing, it was a lot of fun. Alrighty, now when you run a, something like this guys, I like to recommend a big 14 inch air filter with a drop base. The drop base gets it back down over the carby like that. Let's just check this thing out. The HP carbies have a really nice open blended centre guys, a bit more racing oriented. The vacuum secondaries have this choke horn here. Awesome for the street. You'll always dial those in better for the street, setting up your springs and everything better. So I recommend for sort of 90% of street combinations, the dual plane 750 vacuum secondary combo for that 10% of elite guys that are gonna go racing like me and they're building something a bit more compression, a bit more horsepower, go for the Y end. There's a few other choices of these and uh, the dual plane you know the off the single plane there's a holly shrimp dominator there's a red line one that's available two v i've got them all inside but this is the one i recommend guys and the other rock performer you know don't fit a pen nice big filter guys you don't want to be running one of these modern centers five and one eighth inch with air coming in you know an engine is basically a big air pump something like this it's just no good you wouldn't happen to have a set of covers to match these, would you, bro? Yes. <laughs> this yes, is so absolutely Second beautiful. Second hand or NOS? Oh, uh, bro, <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> what guys would do for a set of NOS a lead and covers for a cleaver? These guys just take a minute to look at it. I actually have show. one of these, bro, new inside, unused. Don't want to pull the new. Don't want to pull the new one out for the video. Absolutely beautiful. This is beautiful. a different style of air filter, guys. This is what they refer to as a velocity stack. They're pretty good. Good for an engine dyno or a dyno room or a hot rod where you're going to be moving and you never plan to get stuck in traffic. All right. Now, what we're running on this intake. This is a 2V TFC high rise. Bit of a race intake. Now you wouldn't fit one of these on a street car. This is more race oriented. I'll explain the reasoning behind that. With these, they're built to go. They're not really built to slow down. You'll generally run these on an engine with a huge cam that's gonna have low vacuum. And if you run your brake vacuum signal to the back of the car be here like most guys do, you'll end up sucking a bit of fuel and you'll always end up with a shit pedal feel. The brakes will just be rubbish, but if you get the two, the reason I pulled this one out and not the Parker Funnel Web and not the Trick Flow Track Boss Track Heat is because this has a fitting here to go straight to your brake booster and it's actually ported off so it doesn't suck much fuel. If you're running alcohol or methanol I would suggest running an inline filter to the booster so that nothing gets through and doesn't perish the uh, grommet. It's a bit of dust in there guys, I've had that sitting around for a while. This is new old sock I'm pretty sure. TFC 2V high rise air gap. So you can put your hands right through so the air goes through. I recommend running on these even though they're high. You won't really get these fitted under a bonnet without machining the carby flange pad. And some guys do, they'll take them in and they'll mill this right down to level. And they'll bolt the carby straight onto the top of here and they'll just get it under the bonnet with something like this. But you don't do it, it's ridiculous. You're going to end up with reversion because you're moving the carby th flange throttle plates too close to the fl plenum floor. And you're going to end up with an incredible heat soak. The reason I run phenolic spacers is these are the best. They have the best insulating properties to keep the heat in the intake and not to allow it to spread to the carby. This one I'm going to run one inch. On this one here in Australian Falcons you can always get away with a half inch. Genuine holly. Bakelite Phenolic, sacked spacer, strong as, really good. What would you recommend as like the ultimate air cleaner? If you're well, gonna really, um, if you wanted to get like the best air cleaner for performance. These days there's a lot of different things around. I, I like these, but at the moment I was in performance wholesale the other day and Scotty, my mate in there, hooked me up. Thanks mate. I love buying a lot of stuff from performance wholesale and supporting a local business. They've got a lot of really good gear and they help me out quite a bit. Let's check this out guys. Actually, this is the check this out guys. This is what they call an extreme air filter. Yeah, the lid's breathable. You oil it up. That's awesome. awesome. This is what you want when you're when you're running on a clearance issue so you don't have to cut 
uh, a hole through the bonnet so you can run like 450 or horsepower or so even more sometimes depending what you've done to the engine and with a half inch finoli and one of these I'm gonna stay with me I'm gonna be doing in one of my next videos one of these um, on one of my street cars thanks for watching the video guys so a few little tips and tricks there what's the go of these old bad boys I had this out just to show you is not to run the 9 inch by a 2 inch. The reason this one's out guys is a lot of guys like to fit these on very expensive cars that have bonnet clearance issues. Cobras, Di Tommaso, Panteras, all kinds of weird exotic unique cars that are very expensive. These have a really bad habit guys of when it backfires they'll actually set, they'll catch, they'll burn. Gotta be very careful. Yeah, no good. A customer gave me this. She told me it was on an engine for five minutes. Can you see the Backfired. white? Can you see the white? Oh, yeah, guys. We nearly lost <laughs> this car. Well, I don't want to say what that came off, guys, but the car's pushing a million dollars. Yeah, so don't don't go for those if you can avoid it. They look cool. They do help with bonnet clearance issues, but that foam there is completely flammable. Right, so thanks for watching. We'll just do a quick recap. Dual plane, 2V, good for. At 1000 to 5500 rpm, around 400 horsepower or so, when you're putting a bit of a bigger cam in, you're shifting 1500 to 6500, 7000 rpm with the single plane 2V. The high rise, this is where the big revs come out, guys. This is where you're going to be revving 3000 to 8000. And when you're going to be going, and you don't want to stop. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. If you just want to have a quick pan over here, this is a uh, NASCAR block I'm going to be cleaning up for one of my builds. I'll probably show you a bit of work I do on here. I don't want to start too hard pum pummeling you guys with information. I hope you are enjoying the videos I'm making. Make sure you check out some of my other stuff. This is another NASCAR block over here too, if I'm leaving off. <laughs>